it's a new day, new light, new spot and in this video I want to talk about sharpness. How to get a crisp, sharp image with an all overall sharpness in your image so that you don't have any blurry spots. So the first thing I would recommend is that you use a wide angle lens. The wider your lens is, the easier the sharpness is because you don't have uh, a huge depth of field when you use a wide angle lens. Um, that can be a disadvantage when you want to shoot portrait with a wide angle lens and you want a blurry background, but it's an advantage when you shoot landscapes um, because you won't get a very blurry background or as well a very blurry foreground. Um, another advantage with the wide angle lens is you get more of the landscape on your image. I usually shoot on a 16 to 35 millimeter lens. I also shoot it with 14 millimeter lens or even 12 millimeter lenses, but I for myself prefer 60 millimeters, even 20 millimeters. It looks more natural and when you shoot on 14 or, the, or even lower um, uh, focal length, it looks a bit unnatural, I feel, and it's harder to make a proper composition. That's my opinion. So here right now, I'm on 16 millimeter um, on full frame camera. So if you use an APS-C camera, um, that would be something around 10 or 11 millimeters. So that's one thing I can do for the sharpness, use a wider angle lens. The second thing I do to get more sharpness in the image is I close my aperture. And by closing, I mean I try to stay in the middle aperture range between f8 and f13. That is my optimum in aperture. So you have the best image quality, the best sharpness, um, less chromatic aberration, less uh, vignetting in an image when you use or when you shoot in that aperture range. When you start to close your aperture more, that's what I sometimes do when I have a closer foreground, it's not that much of a, of a uh, lack of image quality. But when you go on f20 or f22, you lose some image quality. The image gets a, bl uh, a bit more blurry. The same with f4. Usually on f4, which is the most open aperture I can shoot on this lens, for example, you get a bit of vignetting, you get a blurrier foreground. So I usually try to stay in the middle f range. Right now here, in this example, I, for example, go on f11. That's usually the aperture I start with when I shoot landscapes. So first thing, aperture f11. And then for example, I choose the ISO usually at day at 100 and then I choose the shutter speed. And what else I can do to get nice effects with the exposure time, I tell you later in other videos. Okay, so closed aperture or middle range aperture as well a good thing for sharpness. So the next important thing is the focus itself. Where should you focus? What is the secret behind focusing? And focus is pretty easy to understand. And all my workshop students are very amazed how easy it is to focus manually. Because most of the times people are afraid to focus manually. They know it from portrait, like when you shoot on f1.8 or 1.4 or 2.8 and you want a blurry background and the focus is not on the eyes, it's on the nose, it's on the ear, it's hard to focus. All the people are spoiled with the autofocus. But in landscape photography, it's slow. You have a tripod, you can pull the focus. When you're used to filming, it's so easy when you just start to focus manually. On a landscape, usually, I don't even have to switch the focus. I focus once, let's say, in the morning, I start to focus, and then I set the focus, and then it's done for the whole day. Sometimes I have to check if it's still proper, but in most of the times, I don't have to even change it. So I'll show you how it works. First of all, go on the manual mode of your camera and the manual focus mode. Not in autofocus, i tell you later why. So manual focus mode. Then here on the Sony camera, uh, when you use the original Sony lens, you get a scale when you start to focus. So in this situation, for example, my closest focus range is 0.3 meters, so 30 centimeters. And then I can start pulling my focus ring and then it goes to 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, 0 0.9, 1 meter, 2 meter, and then in most of the situations on a 60 millimeter lens starts infinity. And infinity just means everything 
that is behind two meters is in focus and as well as a part in front of the two meters that is depending on the aperture but let's say behind it that's the important thing so i go right now and that is important with sony lenses there comes now some few other numbers and i go now till the numbers stop and the first infinity sign appears and the infinity sign is the line eight and when the first infinity sign appears in the camera that is focus on infinity so whenever i say in this video course here focus on infinity what i usually do that's what i mean in sony cameras the first infinity sign after the numbers because there's a huge mistake a lot of sony users do they pull it more pull it more pull it more and there's still the infinity sign but the picture gets out of focus a bit so it gets a bit, uh, a bit blurry again so try to stay at the first infinity sign after the numbers appear so when you just imagine sharpness right now it's the easiest to explain it like this i'm standing right now here the first thing that i have here in my picture in the foreground is that rock here the rock is something about three meters of distance just I say three meters, I don't have something to meter it, but I say it's three or four meters away. So when I say I focus on one meter in my camera and it's standing here one meter or on your scale of your lens, I will tell it um, later how that works. It's totally the same, but this is digital. So it's one meter focus. One meter focus is something here, so one meter away. So when the camera focus on one meter, here is the focus line. And then the sharpness gets from here till let's say on F11, something around 0.5 in the foreground because of the closed aperture and something around, let's say 40 meters or something in the background. You can look everything in the app, you can get the right amounts, but you just have to know how it works. And then you don't have to relate on some apps or whatever just knowing it how your lens and your camera in combination work so when i focus on two meters i'm somewhere here focused so two meters away and then as i mentioned an amount in the foreground let's say till this amount let's say one meter and in the background now it's not 40 meters anymore now it's something around 80 meters but still not infinity and when I'm focused on infinity, I have everything in focus which is more away than two meters and still things that are in the foreground. And usually when I'm on 60 millimeters on a full frame camera, I'm on F18, I have an amount of sharpness from infinity till something around 40, 50, 30 centimeters in the foreground. So when I don't have anything that is closer than let's say half a meter, to my lens of the camera, I can focus on infinity. And it's that easy. You don't have to change it during the whole day. We just focus on infinity. For stars, for northern lights, for mountains, for a situation like this. Don't care if portrait or landscape mode, it's still the same. So I usually focus on infinity. And now you may be asking, and what is when I have something that is closer than let's say 50 centimeters? Then it's pretty easy. I don't go on infinity anymore. I go, let's say on two meters. And then it's not 50, uh, 50 centimeters or 30 centimeters, it gets a bit closer. And then I close the aperture as well, F18 for example, and then I get more amount of sharpness in the image from infinity till my foreground. And when that still does not fit and it's even closer than let's say 30 centimeters, I do two exposures, two different focus levels. One on the foreground, let's say on one meter or 50 centimeters away, I usually don't focus on the foreground. That's one big mistake a lot of people do. When they have a rock near in the foreground, they focus on the foreground and then the background gets blurry, even with a closed aperture. So try to focus on the background. On infinity, most of the cases, it works with the wide angle lens. And then you get the full range of sharpness in your image. And I show you the same now on a normal, let's say lens, where you don't have a digital meter, like I have here in the Sony camera. Um, and it's pretty easy as well. When you don't have a focus scale or have a focus scale inside of your camera, you can as well use the digital zoom. On this camera, for example, you find it here on the C2 button or depending on which button uh, you use in your camera, you have um, set to. So here you, I press C2 
and then comes that little square here and when I press it again I can digitally zoom in and as well change it for example on top of the mountain I can even zoom in more and then even when you wear glasses or something you can perfectly see where the focus is and as I mentioned when you zoom more on infinity it gets blurry again and when I go less on infinity or then infinity you see the focus is not on the mountain anymore when a one meter two meter four meter and now the first infinity sign focus peaking on the mountain everything is crisp sharp so now it's great and you can do it on a Nikon you can do it on a Canon camera and on a Sony as well most of the cameras have that thing if you don't know where it is just look in the manual of your camera it's a great thing to focus okay here we have another 16 to 35 millimeter lens it's my other Sony lens uh, the 2.8 lens for a mount and this has a scale and usually I love scales because it's so easy to focus you have here meter and feet and I usually go on meter so the white thing and then you have numbers and here is a slash so which numbers on the red flash is the focus distance so in this situation the nearest focus distance I have with that lens is 0.2.8 centimeters so I don't know why they don't write 0.3 but never mind the next thing is 0.3.2 and you see how much I have to turn the lens to just change a few centimeters of focus and that is important to realize so the next thing is 0.4 then 0.6 then one meter two meter and infinity and the important part now is infinity is not here yeah not behind that other slash so when the slash the white slash is on the red slash then you are focused on infinity pretty easy to understand so here the same everything over two meter is infinity so when you have stars when you have a mountain in most of the situation that you photograph go on infinity and when you have a slash next to the infinity sign that means infinity on some lenses like on the Canon 16 to 35 millimeter 2.8 lens you have even a number behind the infinity thing and that means on 60 millimeters it's on the 16 number which is next to the infinity sign and on 35 millimeters for example it's then the slash on th uh, the slash on slash that is usually when you have a zoom lens because the focus changes on some lenses when you start to zoom that's why I as well usually recommend not to zoom too much especially when you have a lens like 18 to 300 millimeters there's a huge change in focus with that lens and a loss of quality as well so focus is pretty easy to understand and I will do some example with an even closer subject and then I'll show you the different pictures in most of the situation you won't recognize it when you don't zoom in in a picture especially when you have like a high megapixel camera over 20 megapixel or something you won't even recognize it because most of the people just post for the internet or just just photograph and then post it or just print it in a small size whenever you print it in a big size you might see it but then you go far away as well so don't be that super confused with all the focus things you hear or read on the internet in most of the cases infinity is totally uh, okay hyperfocal distance I will tell you when I have a closer uh, subject I already mentioned it but without the name don't be confused by all the things that's what, what I just can say okay if you have a mirrorless camera a lot of mirrorless camera has as well focus peaking and focus peaking is a great advantage as well in landscape photography and portrait photography I just focus manually all the time wildlife portrait landscape I do everything manually with focus peaking because it's that easy and focus peaking is just a helping thing you see the yellow dots or the yellow ants running around in my image and that is the focus peaking and when the focus peaking or the yellow ants are the strongest in this example you can change the color from red I think white and yellow I have yellow most of the times when it's the strongest then you have the amount of sharpness on that area for example now the mountain when I'm focused on 0.3 meters there are just a few ants so it's not much sharpness in the back area and when I go now on infinity I have the most amount of yellow running ants um, on 
my mountain and as well on the rock in the foreground on the rock in the middle ground so everything as i mentioned in the image is sharp so that is just a control thing like you can say the histogram or something for sharpness so i take a picture looks great but what you can do now when you know how to focus when you did a proper composition when you have some nice waves like you have here i will show you in the next video this was a lesson from my video course Easy Learn Landscape Photography at learnfromben.com filmed in beautiful Norway. And it's part of this year's five-day deal photography bundle where you can get plenty of courses, video courses, educational courses by international photographers, including me, worth thousands of dollars for only under $100. Link is in the description below and you not only get a huge discount, also part of the profit goes to charity. So check out this year's five day deal. It's only valid for five days. That's where the name comes from. Link is in the description. Invest in your photography skills now, download the whole bundle and enjoy my course and the courses by the other photographers. If you liked the video, hit thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel, of course. See you next time.